Well, welcome back to the City Conservation Center, my friends. Hope you all are having wonderful days so far. Now, today we are finally rounding out our Preservation Plains area with the African... No, not the African. Oh my gosh. Uh, no, the American Bison. Yes, the American Plains Bison. Wow, that was quite a start to a video right there. So, yeah, we are finally rounding out this section. It's essentially what I am coining the Preservation Plains. Thanks to Zootin Tower, that's a very old zoo that I was actually quite a big... Not a big, oh my gosh, part of, small part of. Uh, it was a collaboration between so many awesome content creators and builders in the community. And I felt like the name Preservation Plains is just too good to settle on one zoo. Listen, real zoos all the time copy each other's names. I saw one was called Water's Edge, another was called River's Edge. Listen, we, we share things in this community. We absolutely share things in here. Either way, we're building for the American Plains Bison, a really awesome animal. So, what many people may understand is that the Plains Bison currently sits at either vulnerable or at least concerned. I forget which one. I think it's one or the other. But it's very interesting to see that because they were once extremely endangered, very much reduced to I think a couple hundred within the population, maybe even less than that. They were extremely eradicated by westward settlers way back in the day. Uh, and it wasn't until like our good old buddy Theodore Roosevelt was able to really institute some new practices in terms of trying to preserve the species for future generations. And that's just a really incredible thing to have. So that's one of the things I really wanted to illustrate over here. And we kind of try our best to give them a nice, beautiful, spread out habitat. So you can see what I'm doing throughout here is kind of outlining the rest of the habitat with rocky, rocky outcrops and stuff like that. So I'm using these wonderful blue blah wow i'm doing great today if you guys can't tell i'm using all of these pre-built blueprints uh in terms of the rocks in order to kind of dedicate this area as to where the bison aren't able to go and that's a really awesome way to kind of orient your habitats like that i talked about that back in the red panda habitat episode so you guys can check that out for a little bit more of a detailed description on that. But essentially what I do, I build the habitat a little bit bigger than what I want to go for. And then I kind of shrink it down with foliage, with rocks and stuff like that. So you can tell it's not nearly as big as I wanted it to be before, but we kind of fix it up a little bit afterwards. What I also use is all the other blueprints that we made for this series. Not really the series, but the section more like it. So I'm using all these fences in order to dedicate where you can't really see the animals, in order to dedicate areas where you don't really want guests to go, and also the smaller fences to dedicate where you actually do want guests to look into. Uh, this is very much a habitat inspired by the larger plains of the zoos that I've been to this year. I know that I've been to National Zoo and they have a lovely plains exhibit for the... I think it's of Shavalsky's Wild Horse, yeah, for their Shavalskis. It's also kind of based off of Bronx Zoo's uh, American Bison and their hoofstock habitats in their African section. Very much big open plains and stuff like that. And Zoo Miami also has some habitats that are relatively open like this, though it's very much just like a diet inspiration from them. <gasps> so what I'm also doing over here, don't mind me hiccuping, is trying to get more rocks down because in order to get this whole area, really feeling like it makes sense. I gotta work in between these areas between the, I believe, the Shabalski's Wild Horse and the American Bison, so I'm kind of trying to connect those two areas up a little bit. And I do that a lot more later down the line in, like, you know, the latter half of the speed build. But what I'm doing over here is just trying to frame this habitat towards the back a little bit more. So I'm using the cypress trees just because I really love the look of them. They really help to sell this, like, nice modern zoo aesthetic. So I'm trying to do my best with that all the way over there. And then I get to work on the foliage. This is easily my favorite part of the habitat process. It's just taking these nice big planes and then making them look beautiful. So I take all my periwinkle grass. I kind of sink that down a little bit once I get all my clusters all set. And I think I actually do something different this time around. I could be mistaken, but I also do the Yorkshire fog grass at the same time. Actually, no, I don't. I do it afterwards. Look at that! I think I do it later down the line for like the exterior of the habitat. 
So one thing I really wanted to include in here are those pace trails I mentioned before. Ensuring that you have these pace trails is a really wonderful way to make your habitat look a lot more realistic, even though sometimes it really isn't that good. Uh, pace trails are something that you get in real zoos all the time where animals constantly go over the same area and in turn really make grasses die out and make like these nice dirt trails form. Not nice. I shouldn't have said that. But still, that's something that you oftentimes get in realistic zoos, so that's something I like to emulate within my zoos itself, because listen, my zoos aren't perfect, I'm sure yours aren't either, uh, but you'll oftentimes get stuff like this, especially in even bigger habitats too. I know the wilds in, I don't know, Cincinnati, I want to say. I don't really know, somewhere in the Midwest. Uh, they have this beautiful, expansive um, cheetah habitat, but they still have pace trails, like, on the side of the fence. And it's just like, you have all this room. Why aren't you spreading out? But still, it's something to see. Even if you do have a big habitat like this, you'll often get those little areas trekked in between. That's what I'm kind of working on with over there. You can see me going through and added the um, actual dirt throughout that habitat. That's something that I want to include over there. Then I also do some larger bushes as well. I include a lot of saltwort bushes. They're just a really incredible piece to use. And I'm using all these groups uh, just to really make it feel like it's a lot more overgrown. Uh, bison are, of course, I think they're grazers. I think they're grazers. Yeah, they eat grass. They're not browsers. Uh, so they would eat the grass a lot, too, and that's kind of what contributes to a lot more dirt kind of looking habitat over here. If you are building realistically, do keep in mind the diets of your animals. Make sure you are relatively staying close to mind and paying close attention to what they would eat inside the habitat. If they're browsers, you wouldn't really have, like, you know, trees or large shrubs that really have a lot of bushes on them, or leaves, rather. Hi, I'm Leaf. Uh, but if you have grazers, you really wouldn't have all these nice big, um, I guess you could call that grassy areas. Uh, I should probably go back and take some grass away from some of the other habitats in that regard, but you know what? It's totally fine. It's a historical monument, and I'm not going to change it at all. So this is another thing that I wanted to do, as I said before, is work on the exterior of the habitat. So I'm kind of trying to do that right throughout here, just making sure I add as much grass as possible throughout here, just make it sure it feels a lot more lush. And I use the tips of the trees to create these nice bush kind of things. And I also use bushes right next to that, really helping it feel a lot more organic and making it feel like it's a lot more, I don't know, dressed up. If that makes sense, I don't know. Do I make sense anymore, guys? I feel like I've lost it over these past two years of doing YouTube. But still, adding some other stuff in here, like the shade and the logs from the other habitats, and also decorating the rest of the exterior of this habitat as well, is a really wonderful way to make sure that this whole area feels consistent with the rest of the zoo. And it takes a lot more stuff away from you later down the line. Uh, making sure that you do this stuff in advance is a great way to make sure that you don't need to do it later down the line. Uh, especially when you get into like the big old groove of something. You can see me start to work on this little creek down here. Probably should have mentioned that before. I also added a small little water feature. Keep in mind I did not finish it. Um, that's something that I regret not finishing. Uh, but I'll probably add some like grating and some fencing down there. Once I actually do get back into the file, hopefully I can get back in there later tonight. But that's something I wanted to add down there. Uh, but making our way throughout here is just making sure that we have this whole area feel a lot more built up. What I love about this section is just how awesome the vistas are. I really do love how well they're turning out. It's something I wasn't expecting going in here. But it really does turn out so beautiful. And something I also like is a nice light baby blue color that we use for the accents in this section. You can really tell that as I make my way throughout the zoo, I have like different accent colors for the sections. So this one is baby blue and white for preservation planes. Kind of like represents the sky and stuff like that. So we add a whole bunch of benches and stuff throughout there. I probably should go back in and add some education as well, so I'll be doing that later. But that is our entire habitat, guys. I want to thank you all so much for stopping by. It really means so much just to see that this series is still getting some love. And it feels so awesome just to be able to get back in here and do some really inspirational habitats. Just because, I don't know, it just feels great to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are absolute peaches. Can't wait to see you all in the next episode. Take care, and I hope you all 
you guessed it, have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now. Bye.